Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome, you one and all, uh, to the new lecture classes on non communicable diseases. And today we are going to discuss on coronary heart disease. So, coronary heart disease is also known as ischemic heart disease. As the definition goes for goes by for coronary heart disease. As I said earlier, coronary heart disease, synonym is also known as ischemic heart disease, has been defined as impairment of heart function due to inadequate blood flow to the heart compared to its knees caused by obstructive changes in the coronary circulation to the heart. So what happens primarily is there is a decrease in the blood flow to the heart compared to what it is actually required for the heart and this is primarily caused by obstructive changes. There is some obstruction. There is some obstruction in the coronary circulation to the heart. Heart as, a, heart, as you know, is supplied by coronary arteries. If there is uh, any obstruction in the coronary arteries, either in the form of a thrombus or in the form of a clot or in the form of atherosclerosis, or whatsoever the reason there is an obstruction in the coronary circulation, then there is decreased blood flow to the heart and this results in coronary heart disease. The WH and this coronary heart disease has been responsible for 25 to 30 percent of all uh, deaths in uh, various countries, especially in developed countries. The World Health Organization has drawn attention to the fact that this coronary heart disease is a modern epidemic, that is a disease that affects population, not an unavoidable attribute of aging. So it is a modern epidemic because it is seen in more numbers among the population and it is uh, an attribute which follows aging and it, because of aging factor, because as the people grow old, uh, they suffer from coronary heart disease. This coronary heart disease may manifest in many presentations like angina pectoris and effect, myocardial infarction specific to CSD, irregularities of the heart, cardiac failure and sudden death. This myocardial infarction is specific to coronary heart disease. Angina pectoris of effort and sudden death are not specific to coronary heart disease. Then, uh, <clears throat> then we uh, rheumatic heart disease and cardiomyopathy create a lot of confusion as far as the diagnosis of uh, coronary heart disease is concerned. So the most important of all this is myocardial infarction, which is specific to coronary heart disease. Now. As you understand, in epidemiology, we need, to, uh, we need to see the quantum of disease or the load of disease in the community. And this can be done by various ways. The burden of CSD may be estimated in various ways, illustrating, illustrating a different aspect of the picture. Number one is proportional mortality ratio. Number two is loss of life expectancy. Number three is CSD incidence rate. Number four is age specific death rate. Number five is prevalence rate. Number six is case fatality rate. Number seven is measurement of risk levels. Number eight is medical care. Proportional mortality ratio. It is the uh, number of deaths caused by CSD to the total number of deaths. So it is responsible for almost um, the 25 to 30 uh, percent of the uh, of all the deaths that occur from various causes. So proportional mortality ratio is. Uh, I mean, it's more in, uh, ma in males compared to that of females. Loss of life expectancy. So it is observed that this coronary heart disease may cause a life expectancy. If all the risk factors that are responsible for coronary heart disease are prevented or averted, there is seen that the coronary heart disease, uh, there is in the, uh, decrease in coronary heart disease and this is reflected in the form of uh, increase in the average lifespan from 3.54 years to almost uh, 6.4 to 7 years. So there is an increase in life expectancy if all the risk factors related to uh, CSD are controlled and, and there is increase in life as I said earlier from 3.4 to 6.4 or sometimes up to 7 years. CSD incidence rate. <clears throat> this is usually measured by the fatal and non-fatal rates uh, rates of uh, CSD. Though, though it is a crude indicator uh, but this is uh, helps in understanding about the incidence of CSD among the general population. A specific death rates, they are the true indicators of uh, the uh, incidence of CSD and it reflects up and it uh, gives an idea about the etiology of uh, CSD 
that occur in the particular age group. Uh, prevalence rate. Uh, this prevalence rate is usually known in the population by doing the measurement of blood pressure as well as by ECG. So by this we can really understand how many people are how many people had myocardial infarction and how many people had prolonged chest pain. Um, and as a result, we can find out the number of people or the number of or the, or the number of people in the population who actually have coronary heart disease. Case fatality rate, out of the total number of cases, how many uh, cases due to CSD, how many are actually dying? So the numerator is deaths due to CSD, but total number of cases due to CSD, that is the denominator into 100. Measurement of risk factor levels. Uh, the burden of disease is also known by measuring the risk factor levels like cigarette smoking. What is the level of cigarette smoking? Or what is the prevalence of cigarette smoking among the population? Uh, then, uh, we have the serum, uh, serum the alcohol consumption. Then we have also the serum cholesterol levels, and also it's and also the lipoprotein levels. So the various risk factor levels can be actually measured, like on also the prevalence of hypertension. So hypertension, cigarette smoking, and uh, uh, what do you say, alcohol consumption, and serum cholesterol levels. If we measure these risk factors, we can actually quantify the burden of CSD in the community. Uh, the burden of CSD in the community can also be known by the level of medical care in the community. The level of medical care means the number of hospitals, the number of doctors, the number of nurses, and the number of intensive care units that are responsible. In this context of all this, especially in case fatality rate, we should understand what we mean by a sudden death. Sudden deaths are deaths due to uh, the acute symptoms and signs of cardiovascular disease and it was results in the first hour of onset of these symptoms. Now, uh, <clears throat> case fatality is also measured by the number of de uh, deaths which have occurred uh, from the onset of signs and symptoms of CSD and within 28 days of this onset of the signs and symptoms of CSD. So, so there are the deaths um, which occur within 28 days are taken as uh, case fatality rates. And uh, sudden deaths are those deaths which occur within 24 hours of the onset of signs and symptoms of CSD. Now let us learn about the epidemicity of this uh, particular coronary heart disease. This epidemics of CSD, well, they began at different times in different countries. US, it started in the United States of America in 1920. In 1930, it started in Great Britain and in several other European countries still later. So Euro European countries followed these uh, countries like US and Britain. Now the developing countries are catching up. More and more developing countries are having these epidemics of CSD and they're slowly uh, having this problem of the epidemics of CSD. There have been substantial declines in mortality in US, Australia, Canada and New Zealand because of the uh, behavior modification and lifestyle changes. Behavior modification includes uh, reduction of stress, um, uh, uh, reduction of uh, alcohol consumption or, and cigarette smoking and at that time and also about dietary modification which they do in the reducing the uh, taking the diet which is in reduced serum cholesterol, uh, having reduced uh, cholesterol and also um, um, lip lipoproteins and fats. The decline in the CSD mortality in the US and other countries have been attributed to as I said earlier lifestyle changes and Related risk factors, that is diet and diet dependent serum cholesterol, cigarette use and excess habits, plus better control of hypertension. When CSD emerged as a modern epidemic, it was a disease of higher social class in most affluent societies. It, may, it seemed that in many countries which are rich, and uh, um, these, these were the countries which were having the CSD problem. These are because of their poor dietary habits or either because of the uh, behavior or because of the lifestyle they used to lead and lack of exercise, cigarette smoking and alcohol consumption. Now 50 years down the lane, there is a strong inverse relation between the social class and the most developed countries. So in more developed so countries, what we find CSD has developed more in lower social class. It means that lower social class also, people of lower social class also, a lower economic class a lower socioeconomic status people also are seen to have more of the prevalence of CSD amongst them. So, um, 
to observe these trends, uh, the World Health Organization has started a project called MONICA, M-O-N-I-C-A, that is Multinational Monitoring of Trends and Determinants in Cardiovascular Disease in 41, in, uh, 41 centers. So it is a multi-centric study in 26 countries. So to understand these patterns, uh, the WHO has started this uh, study, uh, this uh, uh, study called MONICA, M-O-N-I-C-A, Multinational Monitoring of Trends and Determinants uh, in, uh, of Cardiovascular Disease. So, so this is being done in 41 centers. So simultaneously they have started in 41 centers in 26 countries. International variations with 7.2 billion deaths and 12.8% of total deaths. CSD is a worldwide disease. So as seen by this quantum of this uh, diseases, uh, the morbidity load or disease load, it is seen that um, CSD is a universal disease and it is spread over all, our, all the countries in the world. Mortality rates vary widely, of course, in different parts of the country. The highest coronary mortality is seen in Western Pacific region at present, in the fall, followed by the European region. So Western Pacific region is seen to have the highest coronary mortality followed by the European region. On the other hand, in Americas and the Eastern Mediterranean countries, it is much lower. The international variations are seen in the subsequent table in the next slide. So as you see that the Western Pacific is having the large number of deaths or the total number of deaths which, is, which amount to 943 per 1 million uh, deaths, uh, 9,433 per 1 million deaths which constitute around 16.6% 6 of all the deaths. Western Pacific region is seen to have the maximum number of deaths followed by Europe and less number of deaths are seen in Americas, Africa and the Eastern Mediterranean. So uh, even in Southeast Asian region, which India and other neighboring countries in Southeast Asia, um, they do also have the increased number of deaths due to CSD. And this is primarily due to uh, CSD and the estimates for in the year 2016. Coronary heart disease in India. There is a considerable increase in the prevalence of CSD in urban areas in India during the last decade. So it has been observed that we have more number of cases of CSD in urban areas in India during the last decade. There is also increase in the prevalence of CSD in rural areas, but it is not that steep as compared to urban areas because lifestyle changes have affected people more in urban areas compared to rural areas. So what we need to understand is that lifestyle changes are, uh, have affected people more in urban areas compared to that of rural areas where traditional eating patterns, where traditional lifestyles are followed and where a lot of hard work and exercise is involved in rural areas where people tend to do all types of jobs. The pool, pool estimates from studies carried out in 1990 up to 2002 shows the prevalent rate of CSD in urban areas as 6.4% and 2.5% in rural areas. So what we are given to understand is the prevalence of coronary heart disease is 6.4% in the urban areas and 2.5% in rural areas. It means urban areas, then it is more compared to that of rural areas as we had discussed earlier. In urban areas, the pool estimates were 6.1% for males and 6.7% for females. So the urban areas, the pool estimate tilts unfavorably towards females, citing the more number of uh, more number of uh, cases of prevalence of uh, CSD. Likewise, uh, uh, in rural areas, the estimates was 2.1 percent for males and 2.7 percent for females. So in rural areas also there is a predilection more for females and definitely we find in urban areas and rural areas the females are more affected. The more number of cases of CSD are found in females compared to that of males. According to medical certification of cause of death data, 25.1% 25, 25 of all total deaths in urban areas are attributable to diseases of the circulatory system. So in circulatory system it is found that most of the deaths of the circulatory system, the, the 25 
uh, occur in urban areas. So most of the times attributed to circular decision are found in urban areas. That is 25.1 percent of the total deaths. It is estimated that 1.6 million people, that is 16 lakhs 8,700 people, died of CSD during the year 2016. This is the latest statistics what we have, of which uh, 1.8 million people, 1.1 1 .1 million people were men, or 10 lakhs 800 uh, people were men, and 6 lakhs 7,800 were women. So this is the statistics that is involved a more number of men are affected compared to that of uh, women and uh, the crude death rate was 121.5 per 1 lakh population. So crude death rate is definitely was found to be 121.5 means for every 1 lakh population the uh, deaths were uh, 121 compared to that of uh, 121 per 1 million uh, 1 lakh population. <clears throat> Epidemiological determinants. Epidemiological determinants in a non communicable disease are basically the risk factors. The risk factors for coronary heart disease are non modifiable risk factors, are uh, immutable risk factors, risk factors which cannot be modified, which cannot be changed, and modifiable risk factors, risk factors which are subject to uh, changes, interventions, or which can be modified, or which can be reduced, or which can be lessened. As you understand that uh, etiology of CSD is multifactorial. There is multifactorial causation of CSD. There are many important risk factors of which some are modifiable and others are non-modifiable or immutable. So presence of any of these risk factors like either a one of a modifiable or either one of a uh, non-modifiable risk factor can place an individual in a high risk category for developing CSD. And a person can have one or two or three or four risk factors. The greater the number of risk factors present, the more likely the person is to develop. There is a chance of the person developing CSD, or there is a chance of a person developing coronary heart disease if the number of risk factors is more. The principal risk factors are discussed in subsequent slides. As I said earlier, the non modifiable risk factors are. Age, sex, family history, genetic factors, and personality. So, non multiple risk factors are immutable risk factors, uh, factors which cannot be changed, uh, which are uh, there with us as we are born with them. So, they are basically age. Age cannot be changed, likewise, sex cannot be changed, family history of the person cannot be changed, genetic factors are imbibed as we are born. And the personality of a person cannot be changed. All these are non modifiable risk factors, are immutable risk factors, and risk factors which cannot be changed or subject to intervention. Age. Incidence of CSD is above 50 years and maximum between 50 to 60 years of age. So, CSD is found to be high among um, in, in age group more than 50 years and in maximum between 50 to 60 years of age. So the, the, it has been observed that um, the, uh, the CSD rises considerably in age as the, the age increases from 50 to 60 years um, down the lane. Sex is more common among men than women, although we have said that the uh, prevalence of, um, uh, what do you say, of the CSD in urban areas and rural areas may be found that uh, it is more in women compared to men. But Generally, it is seen more among men than women, but Indian studies have showed that in urban areas and rural areas, the prevalence of CSD is more in women compared to that of men. Family history. CSD has been seen to run in families. A family history of CSD is seen to increase the risk of premature deaths. So if, the, if somebody in the family is having the CSD, there's every chance that the descendants, that their progeny is likely to have the disease uh, and if a person is having a family history of CSD, there is definitely there is an increased chance of the risk of premature death in that person. So, so never avoid, never try to forget taking the family history of CSD in a person, in a high risk person, uh, so that as it forms an important risk factor. Genetic factors. 
Genetic factors are probably the most important determinants of a given individual's total cholesterol and LDL levels. So total cholesterol and LDL levels are, are uh, marked by genetic factors and they form the most important determinants of the levels of, of a person's total cholesterol and low density lipoprotein levels. Personality. It is seen that we have different people have different personalities. Type A personality and the type B personality as we see among the people. So type A personality or behavior is associated with a competitive drive. A person who is always on the edge, who always uh, believes in competition, who is restless, who is very hostile and there is a sense of urgency or impatience. So we find among them a lot of sense of urgency or impatience. They are always restless, they are very hostile, they are aggressive, they have a competitive drive. They are, these people are at a higher risk of CSD than the more sober, the more calmer and the more philosophy of type B individuals. So type B individuals or type B personality, they are more calmer people. They are more philosophical type. They just wait uh, for anything to decide and they are not restless. They are peace with themselves. So they are at less risk of CSD compared to that of people who are having type A behavior or type A personality. Then we have different type of modifiable risk factors. Modifiable risk factors, as I said earlier, these are the risk factors which can be modified, which can be subject to intervention, which can be reduced, which can be decreased or lessened by any type of intervention. We have to know. So modifiable risk factors are basically smoking, hypertension, uh, serum cholesterol, diabetes, physical activity, uh, uh, alcohol, oral contraceptives, and miscellaneous. So, as I said, the model, you have to remember these modifiable risk factors that basically number one, smoking. Number two is hypertension, serum cholesterol, diabetes, physical activity, alcohol, oral contraceptives, and miscellaneous. Smoking. Many commit uh, suicide by drowning, and smoking is also one of the factors which will ultimately lead to the suicide in people. So, drowning and smoking are almost correlated. So, what I mean to say is, many uh, some people commit uh, suicide by drowning, and, many, and some people commit suicide by smoking. So, smoking, in fact, leads to the death of the person, and is ultimately a suicide. You are killing yourself. So smoking is a unique humanly habit, human habit, a human habit, and it has been identified as a major cardiovascular risk factor in several possible factors. So we have the carbon monoxide in, the, in cigarette smoking, which promotes atherogenesis, and we have also nicotine, which which uh, increases the blood pressure or causes hypertension, and uh, which increases the adrenergic drive, which causes hypertension and also increased myocardial oxygen demand and which affects also the lipoprotein levels. So, uh, so smoking has been responsible for CSD to a large extent. So the degree of uh, developing CSD is directly related to the number of cigarettes smoked per day. So more the number of cigarettes smoked, the more, the, the more can be the uh, possibility of developing coronary heart disease. In this relation, it has been observed that the filter cigarettes compared to ordinary cigarettes do not provide any relief as far as the development of coronary heart disease, disease is concerned. So one should not succumb uh, to the myth that uh, filter cigarettes uh, are in a way safer compared to that of other cigarettes. Both are the equal propensity to cause CSD and more the number of cigarettes smoke, more is uh, the uh, probability of CSD developing in them. Smoking is synergistic with other risk factors such as hypertension, elevated serum cholesterol and the it is seen that it is more of additive uh, as it is observed that when the smoking is combined with hypertension and serum cholesterol, they are very likely to develop CSD earlier. 
risk of death from CSD decreases and cessation of smoking. So there is a substantial reduction of death if a person leaves a habit of smoking within one year. And there is a substantial reduction with the uh, uh, reduction of CSD with the passage of the number of years when a person quits smoking. So with the passage of time, like say one year, two years, three years, uh, if you are going to uh, stop smoking, then there is a substantial decrease in the uh, CSD occurring. And it has been observed that <clears throat> after 10 to 20 years, if a person stops smoking, there's not much reduction in incidence of uh, in the incidence of CSD or in the quantum of CSD, and it is almost equivalent to that of a non-smoker. So the person who uh, relieves himself uh, from smoking uh, from within one year of smoking or uh, within two to three years, there is a substantial reduction of death due to CSD. So this graph shows the probability of myocardial infarction that is on the y-axis per 1000 population and it, this shows the systolic blood pressure uh, in the x-axis. So A, B, C and D are the uh, risks that are involved uh, in developing CSD. So A is uh, those uh, risk uh, in uh, non-smokers and uh, uh, those are no color no rise in cholesterol level. B is a risk in those people who are smokers. C is the risk that is involved uh, with uh, uh, raised serum cholesterol level. And D is the risk that is involved in people having or smokers with raised cholesterol level. So A is no smoker, no smoking. Is A is the risk. You can see the risk that is, uh, and we find that in this case, people are not smoking. They are not having high cholesterol levels, and the risk is up to this. So it is almost uh, three, uh, four, or five. The risk substantially increases if the persons are smokers. So the risk in CSD increases when the persons are smokers. The risk also increases in people who are having high cholesterol level, risk of developing CSD. And you can see that this graph has increased to levels more than 10, probably 16 or 18 SDs. And the risk substantially increases more and more. You can see the height of this, ascent of this graph or ascent of this line with those who are smokers as well as enough, those who are also having high cholesterol levels. Hypertension accelerates the atherosclerotic process, especially if the hyperlipidemia is present, and this contributes mostly to coronary heart disease. So it has been earlier said that diastolic blood pressure is responsible for coronary heart disease, and subsequently, the systolic blood pressure is also attributed. Now, both systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure are now considered as significant risk factors for Serum cholesterol levels. There is a vast body of evidence showing a triangular relationship between habitual diet, blood cholesterol, lipoprotein levels, and CSD, and that these relationships are just to be causal. So there is a triangular relation between um, um, habitual diet, blood cholesterol, lipoprotein levels, and CSD, and these are responsible for the causation of CSD. So CSD is more common in populations that have a little high mean level of cholesterol level. So it has been observed that those who are having a high cholesterol level, say more than 200 milligrams per liter, uh, per deciliter, uh, then if, if people are having more than 200 milligrams per deciliter of cholesterol levels, then CSD is more common in such populations. The, this is seen in figure, next slide, which shows the cultural differences in seven cholesterol levels between two countries, that is Japan and Finland. Japan having the lowest incidence and Finland having the highest incidence. So if you see uh, the serum cholesterol levels, so on uh, the x-axis and the frequency or the number of people having this uh, serum cholesterol levels in these countries. 
So in Japan, South Japan, it is seen that maximum number of people are seen to have cholesterol levels. See, a maximum number of people are seen to have that is more than one uh, frequency percentage per milligram per heart level. So these, <clears throat> these are people are having 100 to uh, 200 uh, milligrams per deciliter cholesterol levels. But in East Finland, it starts from a slightly lower level of uh, uh, of serum cholesterol and and uh, it rises up to 400, milli uh, 400 milligrams per deciliter and there are the more number of people in that. So what we find is in Japan, more number of people are in 100 to 200 uh, milligrams per deciliter levels of serum cholesterol. Whereas in Finland, we have more number of people in uh, uh, the cholesterol levels of 200 to 400. Don't misunderstand by the height of the curves in both in this particular in this particular uh, figure. It only reflects the number of people respectively in each country and not as a comparison with two countries. So it's so if you see in this in this particular figure, we find more number of people of South Japan have levels of cholesterol in 100 to 200. If you see in this curve, we find more number of people um, in East Finland having between uh, levels of 200 to 400 levels milligram per deciliter. So this is how the serum cholesterol levels are there in this particular group. We can therefore infer that Japan is having more number of people with cholesterol levels in the range of 100 to 200 milligram per liter compared to less number of people East Finland with cholesterol levels in the range of less than 200 milligrams per deciliter. This shows, this results in lowest incidence of CSD in Japan compared to highest incidence in Finland. So what we can infer from this graph is, is more number of people, as I said, don't compare the heights of both the curves. It is, you have to see with, with respect to each country, though the figure is slightly confusing. So what we need to infer is Japan is having more number of people in cholesterol levels of 100 to 200 milligrams per deciliter. East Finland has having more number of people in uh, cholesterol levels of 200 to 400 milligrams per deciliter. So uh, normal levels of cholesterol levels in Japan results in lowest incidence, and uh, whereas high levels of uh, cholesterol levels in Finland results in more CSG levels. Now in the next figure, in the subsequent slide, we see that the risk of CSD increases steadily with the serum cholesterol concentration. So we find at the serum cholesterol in this in this figure, what we find is the 14-year incidence per 1,000, and that is on the y-axis, and serum cholesterol level on the x-axis. So the risk we find the crude incidence of um, uh, serum cholesterol increases with the increase of um, uh, of uh, Good incidence of CSD per 1,000 population increases with the increase of serum cholesterol levels. As the serum cholesterol levels increase are defined with increasing numbers on x-axis, there is increase in the rise of the curve on the y-axis. What we find is more the crude incidence of CSD is definitely more, as you see, with more levels of cholesterol. The 14 years experience of the seven countries studied showed that. Serum cholesterol concentration is an important risk factor for the incidence of CSD at levels more than 220 milligrams per deciliter or more. This supports the notion of a threshold level of cholesterol that, that is a certain level beyond which there is a association. So beyond 220, beyond 220, there is an increase in the incidence of uh, coronary heart disease, and definitely this points out to the association between. Uh, serum cholesterol and coronary heart disease. So, as uh, there is a sudden jump, a rise in the crude incidence of CSD, we can therefore infer from the graph that uh, serum cholesterol level increases, the incidence of CSD also increases, and there is definitely an association between serum cholesterol and CSD or coronary heart disease, which is seen to rise uh, at the levels of serum cholesterol at 220 milligrams per deciliter per 100 ml of blood. So 220 ml, 220 um, milligrams per deciliter of uh, blood is the threshold level beyond which it is seen that coronary heart disease is observed. LDL cholesterol is more directly associated with CSD. 
VLDL cholesterol is associated with premature atherosclerosis and most strongly associated with peripheral vascular disease than CSD. So CSD is almost directly associated or LDL cholesterol is associated. VLDL is premature atherosclerosis and peripheral vascular disease. HDL cholesterol is protective against the development of CSD. So the level of CSD HDL cholesterol should be more than 40 mg per deciliter. Cholesterol by HDL ratio less than 3.5 has been recommended as a clinical goal for CSD prevention. So if you find that cholesterol by HDL, if it is <coughs> less than 3.5, so less than 3.5, then we can take it as a clinical goal for CSD prevention. So maintain a ratio of less than 3.5. So you should know that cholesterol in milligrams per deciliter. HDL should be 40, more than 40 milligrams per deciliter. So, so 220 divided by more than 40, say 50 or 60. So that will result in a ratio of less than 3. Recent evidence indicates the levels of plasma apolipoprotein A1, that is the major HDL protein and apolipoprotein B, the major LDL protein, are better predictors of CSD than GL cholesterol or LDL cholesterol respectively. So apolipid proteins have a sort of a role <coughs> that is apolipid protein A1 they have a, which, is a, which is a sort of a marker for HDL protein and apolipid protein B which is a sort of marker for LDL uh, lipoproteins. They, if, if we measure these levels they are better predictors compared to that of HDL cholesterol and LDL cholesterol. Therefore, measurement of apolipoproteins may replace lipoprotein cholesterol levels in a single of CSG. Other risk factors are diabetes. It has been found that in diabetes, there is a chance of uh, three to five times higher of development of coronary heart disease and deaths subsequently compared to that of non diabetes. <clears throat> so, if a, uh, diabetes is a very important disease as far as the coronary heart disease is concerned. So, chances of CSG is more come in diabetes compared to that of non-diabetics and it has been observed that physical activity improves the HDL level cholesterol in a person and also decreases obesity and they increase waistlines and in this way is responsible for the decreased incidence of CSG. Sedentary habits promote the development of waistline, the development of higher BMI and uh, as a result more of CSG and more of LDL cholesterol, VLDL cholesterol can occur in this. <clears throat> Hormones. Hyperestrogenemia is responsible for CSD. That's why we find more of women having CSD compared to that of men. And if a, a, and if a person consumes alcohol, so alcohol consumption is one of the risk factors in coronary heart disease. If a person consumes more alcohol, I, then there's every chance of uh, developing CSD. So more alcohol in the sense that if a consume, uh, person consumes, consumes more than 75 milligrams per uh, 75 milligrams of alcohol, then there's every chance for day, there's every chance of he developing uh, coronary heart disease compared to those people consuming less amount of alcohol. Oral contraceptives. It has been found that oral contraceptives are responsible for increased weight gain, increased blood pressure, and uh, and also, they are going to affect this lipoprotein levels, and this is in a way responsible for coronary heart disease. So, these are the number of risk factors. These are the modifiable risk factors. Other miscellaneous risk factors are dietary fiber, sucrose, sucrose that is dietary fiber. The increase of dietary fiber is going to reduce coronary heart disease. Increase of sugar is responsible for increase in coronary heart disease. Salt water is also um, is, uh, is a risk factor for coronary heart disease. So salt water definitely promotes coronary heart disease. Disney and exertion and low vital capacities are also responsible for increased coronary heart disease in people having these risk factors. So um, other risk factors like diabetes, physical activity, hormones, alcohol, oral contraceptives and other things are very much responsible for this. So, the levels of prevention, 
and the management of coronary heart disease we are going to discuss in the subsequent class so in today's class if you understand and understand what are the various symptoms which patients suffer uh, cardiovascular disease what are the various uh, modifiable risk factors what are the various non modifiable risk factors and what are the various presentation medical presentation of coronary heart disease you should understand so kindly do revise on this an important question of the university examination and also do understand the various curves and graphs that are involved please try to follow the class especially when you when you try to understand the curves and graphs there is like confusion but with the explanation that is provided in the powerpoint you are able i hope you can understand you will be able to understand uh, the figures easily so please do read so so what are the non modifiable risk factors the non modifiable risk factors are age sex family history genetic factors and personality likewise the modifiable risk factors are smoking hypertension some cholesterol diabetes physical activity alcohol and overweight thank you for your patient care